morning. Good morning. We need to repent to God before it's too late. I was reading Jeremiah chapter 7, and I got stuck there for the last week and a half. And the Lord told Jeremiah to tell the people, I will do to you what I did to Ephraim. God didn't want to hear from the seed any longer. He wiped out the entire seed. He said, I will do to you what I did in Silo. He wiped out the entire seed. And the Bible says that there was a great slaughter in the land. And when you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and verse 4, he says that there were sinful people, the people who turned to their own imaginations, the people who turned to the imaginations and the thought processes of their minds. And these are how we got so many different religions on the earth, because people turned to their, their own vain imaginations and to the thought, their own thought processes and to their own, um, I'm going to think positively and I'm going to speak positive and I'm going to send positive vibrations and positive love their way. And just because it's positivity doesn't mean it comes from the Lord God Almighty. And he said this morning to me that we need to repent before it's too late. Because we don't want to be among a people that he doesn't want to hear from. We don't want to be among a people that he wants to have nothing to do with because he wanted to have nothing to do with the entire household of Ephraim, which came from Joseph, which came from Jacob. This was a holy nation. A royal priesthood had God sent them to be and set them up to be his chosen people. And so now in this time in the word, he says, I want nothing to do with them. I want nothing to do with them because they're evil and they continue to do evil in my eyesight. And so we need to ask for forgiveness because we continue to do evil in the eyesight of the Lord. And there is a remnant that he's looking for and I need to know where they are. Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being among a people who don't love him. I'm tired of being among a people who come to church every week and they still do abominable things in his sight. They still do things out in the city and in the streets that they don't need to do. That's what the word says. That's what the word says. That's what the word says. They open up the doors and they do whatever they want to do outside. And then they come inside. And then he said that they wanted to give them drink offerings. And they wanted to give grain offerings. And they wanted to just do what had already been done. They wanted to just follow the practices. But their hearts are far from me. And said, Lord, later on in the book of Mark, Jesus said, Isaiah was right when he prophesied that this lip service would be here, but your hearts would be far from me. And so we need to pray and we need to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Forgive us for doing what we want to do. Forgive us for taking to our own imaginations. Forgive us to take into vain imaginations and vain thought processes in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't shut us out, God. Give us another chance. I know your son came. I know your son came. I know Jesus came. Give us another chance, God. Give us another chance. Oh, God. And bring the remnant forth, oh, God. Those who really want to know you. Those who really want to serve you, God. Those who want to be like you. Those who who don't want to come every week, God, doing abominable things Monday through Saturday. And then Sunday, they want to come and pour offerings out on you, God. We don't want to be that way. We don't want to be that way. Change our hearts, God. Change our minds. Change our hearts and change our minds, God. So then when we enter into the house of the Lord, we can sing true praises to you, God. True praises to our King. And we can worship you in spirit and truth because that's the kind of worshiper that you're after. That's the kind of person that you're after to enter into the house of the Lord. You're after someone who's going to enter into the gates with thanksgiving and enter into the courts with praise. You're after someone who's going to be thankful unto you and bless your name. You're not after someone who's doing it all on their own, God, but knowing that every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord that we need, every piece of strength that comes from heaven we need. Oh, my God, you're the only one that can give that kind of sweet peace and rest and I thank you this morning I thank you this morning I thank you this morning Mm -hmm. I build an altar where I am God and I thank you this morning (laughs) let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight my God my strength my redeemer (laughs) oh God forgive us give us another chance give us another chance 
give us another chance. But we know not what we do. We know not what we do. We know not what we do. Don't turn us over, God, to a reprobate mind. Because a lot of people want to think that, you know, that was Old Testament. No, no. Paul says that the Lord himself will turn you over to a reprobate mind in the New Testament. So God, forgive us. Wash our hearts clean. Wash our hearts clean. Forgive us for doing it the same way all the time. Forgive us. Forgive us, God, for the religious fashions, God, that we picked up. We want to do it your way. We want to do it your way. We want to do it your way. Repent to God, people. Repent to God. Get in his word and find out who he really, really is. Because in the book of Jeremiah, the Bible says they were doing it every week. Just like we go to church every week. They were doing it every week. But there was a remnant who who knew him. And there were a whole bunch of people who knew him not. A whole bunch of people go to church. And there's a remnant that refuse to go and that chooses to have their own worship services and that are in a dangerous area because because they cannot they, 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 they can get their minds caught up in something else. And so we even pray for them today that the remnant would come home, that they would be able to find a, a household of faith, a gathering of sheep of their like nature. Pull them in, God, pull them in. You said if you be lifted up, you would draw all men. And so in those churches where you are lifted up, God, we draw the sheep, draw the sheep, God, draw the sheep, draw the real remnant to that place, God, so they can be safe and that so others can be strengthened because you said there were strength in numbers. And so, God, forgive us. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to ask for forgiveness, real forgiveness, real repentance and turn back to God because there's power in his name. And we need to understand that we if we continue to do abominable things during the week to him, there's no need of you coming to church Sunday, pouring out a drink offering. You can go find it in the word for yourself. Jeremiah chapter seven, that entire chapter brought me to my knees for the last two weeks. And it led me to my face this morning because he said, I want you to seek my face. I don't want you to seek my hand. My hand is always available. The things are always available. But that's why I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all things will be added unto you. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. And so why are you praying and asking for forgiveness? Even in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, the one we quote so much, if my people will... Uh, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray seek my face seek his face and, 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 and turn from your wicked ways then he says he will hear and then he says he will heal the land God bless you today I just wanted to share that because I need for a remnant to understand that there is a household of faith for you and God will do the drawing and I need for the, the masses to understand that you need to repent And I love you and I love Jesus today and I love his word. God bless you. Have an amazing day.